When it comes to 3D, it can be a little bit intimidating or scary just because there's so many different softwares and programs. But today we're just using good old fashioned After Effects and the 3D camera tracker inside of it. There's a decent amount of steps and it might take a little bit, but don't worry, I'm gonna be holding your hand as we cross the road into After Effects 3D. But before we get into the video, I have two very special announcements. Number one, we're doing a buy one, get one free sale on my whole entire website. All my packs and presets are buy one, get one free. That means any pack that you add to your cart, the next one you add is going to be free. I've never ever done a sale like this. This is by far the biggest sale I've ever done on my whole entire site. And it's only going to be available to the 22nd of June at 1159 Central Standard Time. That's announcement one. Announcement two is that every Friday from now on, I'm going to be streaming, watching your music videos on YouTube at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're watching this video as it premieres or a few hours after, I'm probably still live. So come say what's up, submit your video, get some critiques, chill and chat. Every single time we stream, I'm like blown away with the quality of videos and how much stuff I learn and everyone in chat learns. It's always a good time. So if you see me live streaming, come say what's up, kick it in chat, watch some videos, submit yours if you want. But yeah, let's get into the video, start breaking down this 3D because there's a decent amount of steps. Let's get into it. So as you can see, this is what we came up with. I have two in the foreground, one floating in front of the crowd and one in the background. And watching this loop, I realized I picked a pretty weird clip of Dirk. So if you're watching this, Dirk, I'm sorry for <laughs> having you stroke off that microphone on repeat for the tutorial. The first step is taking the stills or pictures that you took at your music video shoot, and turning them into paper textures. That way we can have them floating around like this. What I did personally is just took stills from this music video. So to do that in After Effects, come up here to Composition, Save Frame As, File, and then it's going to render it out and you just click Render and it's going to open it up as a PSD, which is actually good because we're going into Photoshop real quick. So once you open up your picture in Photoshop, now you just have to add on some paper textures. That way you can have that paper look and have it look like it's floating around. So I actually used the Ultimate Texture Bundle V1 and V2 for this effect. And it just so happens that, you know, the BOGO is going on right now. So if you can really drag on whatever texture you think looks best, if you wanted to have like those split lines, I'd suggest you have something where you can see like the fold. That way it makes it a little bit easier. I scale down this piece of paper a little bit. And we're also going to unlock the layer and drag it above the paper texture actually. And then on the plane layer or your photo layer, turn it to screen and then right click and go to create clipping mask. So now it's just on a piece of paper. I always like just making a new layer and painting it black just so we can see what's going on a little bit better until we actually import it into After Effects. So now if you want it to just pop up like this paper texture here where it just kind of is up there the whole time, you're pretty much done. You can just save that as a PNG and you'll be fine. But if you want to have it pop up like this one right here where it pops up into four different pieces, there's a little extra step and I'll show you that right now. So to do that, all you have to do is get the pen tool and then just make it into four different quadrants here. You can do a better job. I'm just showing you for the sake of the tutorial right now. I already have those pieces of paper done. Right click, make selection, turn that feather radius to zero and then click control J and then on the thumbnail of the new layer you just made control click that now it has the marching dots around just the spot you selected and then select on the overall image and click delete and then if you control D that to get rid of the marching ants you can see that one of them is just this side and then the other is the missing part now just go through and do that for the rest of the four so here we are again right click mask control J, control click on the thumbnail, go to the original layer, click delete. And now we have two separated parts and then the last two here. So I'm gonna go through and do just that last part right here. Right click, make selection again, click control J, control click on the thumbnail, go to the original layer, click delete. Now you got four different segments. I don't know if you guys can see actually, but if you do this sometimes, it has like a one pixel order where it kind of like shows the image where it was. All I do is just go to the eraser tool and just really quickly erase all of that stuff because it might show up in your video. It might not. I just like to err on the side of it showing up. That way it doesn't look bad and you have to go back and all that stuff. So there we are. I'm going to turn off that background layer and actually save this as a PSD. So then once you've done all of the paper rips and everything that you want to have pop up, go back into After Effects and go to the tracker and track camera. Might take a little bit depending on your computer or the length of your clip. So you can see here the footage I have is actually zooming in, which makes it a little harder, but not really. All you have to do is go to variable zoom and that'll make it so it tracks with the zoom in. If you have like a stationary clip, like on a tripod, or if it's not really zooming in, it's just like a little handheld, I would stick with fixed angle view. Then create a camera. And what that's gonna do is just make a 3D camera tracker. You can see there. And then we need to import our PSD. That's actually really simple. So all you have to do is drag in the PSD of whatever you made. And then make sure when you click import kind, make sure composition retain layer styles is what you select and also merge layer styles in the footage. That's really important. It's going to make it a lot easier to have like those four separate quadrants pop up. You can now drag that into your composition and also make that a 3D layer and also add motion blur. And if you did everything right, you should see that your picture is actually motion tracked to the scene. And that could be a cool transition here by itself if you had to zoom in or whatever. What we want is we want to have it like kind of floating around like there's some pictures in the actual scene. 
So what I do is just open up transform. Then you kind of just play around with where you want this to be. It could be different for everyone. Obviously your scene's going to be different. I'm going to scale it down a little bit, change the position. Let's start it off pretty small in the foreground, kind of like how we had in the original clip. You can change the X, Y, Z rotation. It's just dependent on what you want. I think since it's paper, it's kind of good to have it like, you know, kind of flopping around and moving with like most motion tracks. You want it to be like pretty in place. But since it's like if you had paper up in the sky, right, it would be like falling and like waving down. You know how paper does paper stuff, right? I would start it off in like kind of like an unusual position. And then I'm going to keyframe everything here. And then we can just go to the end and see what we think looks best. Go ahead. Since it zooms in in our clip, I'm just going to scale it up just a bit. When you zoom in, stuff gets bigger a little bit. And then let's also just change some of these position values. And then I'm also going to easy ease these as always. This part's pretty dependent on how your clip actually plays, but I like the way this looks. I want it to rotate a little bit differently. It really just depends on the angles and everything in your actual footage. So let's see how that looks. Now let's go ahead and animate it. So the four quadrants pop up. So all you have to do now is just go into that composition layer. Let's have it start three frames in one, two, three. And I'm actually going to highlight all these. So it's not actually there at all when it first starts. And let's go five frames at a time, one, two, three, four, five. And I want the bottom left because it just has like the most of the plane in there to pop up first so people can understand what's going on. And I'm gonna drag all these to the right and then go five frames again, one, two, three, four, five. And I want the bottom right to now show up. So that one, I'm gonna drag the other two, five frames, one, two, three, four, five, and have the last one pop up. Now you can see in this composition, if you play it, you can see how it'll pop up. And if that's how you want it to pop up, then you're good when you go back into the actual comp. So that's pretty simple to get just that effect. The part that's gonna make it look really good and actually sell the effect is match the lighting, the blur. So I'm gonna show you how I would do that. So the first thing I would do is match the colors because if the colors don't match, like the lighting, like obviously there's a lot of purple and blue in here. If it's not like reflecting on the paper, it's just not gonna look like it's actually there. So one of the effects I would actually use is just tritone. It's pretty easy to use. That's why I like using it and recommending it. You kind of just find out where you're at in the scene. For us, obviously there's a lot of lights and it's purple. So when you drag that on, you can see the highlights. I would actually say that the highlight should be like this like pink here. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the top. And then the mid tones would probably also be like a, a similar pink. You just gotta like find like what's, like the highlights referred to the brightest areas in the clip. Mid tones are like the, the mid brightness and then the shadows are like the darkest part. So we could do shadows would probably be like a darkish blue and I'll even make that a little bit more visible. And you can see obviously that looks really bad. When you start to blend it definitely helps out a lot. And that's not all we're gonna do, but it does help give that like the feel of it actually being there. I normally blend it pretty hard, like 78 to like 90 even sometimes. Let's see what that looks like. It's already starting to look a little bit more like it's actually there. You can see colors are kind of matching. Another thing I would probably use is curves. You can use honestly any of these like color corrector things, but I like curves as well. Where's that at? There it is. Drag that on. You can kind of match like the brightness properly too. Matching it perfectly isn't the most important thing, but like the closer you can get, the more like obviously this doesn't look like it's floating there. But as soon as you add tritone on, a little bit of that curves, it really does start to help. So now that we kind of got the colors unlocked, I would add Gaussian blur and keyframe that actually. That's gonna really help sell the effect. We want it to when it pops up, kind of match like the depth. If you could imagine like this paper just extended to the floor, how blurry it would be, and that will help out a lot. Let's keyframe the blurriness at the beginning. Double tap U so we can bring up our keyframes. And let's go, I think it's pretty in focus here. I would say maybe only five and then go all the way to the end. Since it's zooming in and we're losing focus on here and we're focusing on Dirk, I'd actually bring it up quite a lot. Maybe something like 25. It's a lot easier when you add more pictures in to kind of get better reference. So I always go back and change it later. But for now, let's leave it like that and click F9 and play it. So that's already looking a lot better. You can see what Gaussian Blur does here. Obviously, the camera is really focused on dirt, so it wouldn't make sense for this to be perfectly in focus as well. Another thing I would add on that's not really realistic, but it kind of just gives the right feel is Drop Shadow. And I just go really aggressive with Drop Shadow, actually. I think it helps out so much. I'm going to bring the opacity to 100 right now, just so we can see what we're doing. And then the softness, I'm going to bring up a decent amount as well. And then let's bring out the distance. Looks like the light's kind of coming from here and behind. I think the direction there would probably be the most realistic. And then I'm gonna soften it even more and then probably bring down the opacity a decent amount. But I think something like 40 is very, very aggressive. Like obviously it's not gonna cast a shadow onto the people back here, but I think it looks good when you have it like that. Maybe a little bit less. For right now, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's move on to the next one. Go ahead and drag on our next image. This one, I'm not actually gonna animate. It's just gonna be one piece of paper that's there the whole entire time. So I'm gonna turn that to 3D and also turn the motion blur and make sure it's tracked properly. As you can see, it's tracked in place, which is good. And now we have to just go to the transform tools and do the same exact thing. For this one, I'm gonna put it in the same spot 
as the example I showed you. So I'm gonna have it out here in the crowd, make it way smaller and maybe even it be further out like position wise. And this one's definitely gonna be the hardest to blend in just cause there's so many different lights here. And uh, it's probably what I struggled with the most in the original example. If it's a really quick clip, you don't wanna spend like forever perfecting it because you know, this whole entire clip is only four seconds anyway. So if you can get it like 90% of the way there, I think just having like all the other clips in position will sell it a lot more. So let's first keyframe all that stuff, move around a little bit like a piece of paper would. This one I'm gonna have a little bit more stationary just cause it's such a big piece. I think it'd look a little weird if it moved around a lot, but let's highlight all these clips, easy ease them and see what that looks like. And if you want, you don't even have to have it move. I just think it looks kind of cool because of the paper elements. What I like to do is just kind of so we can get a similar vibe. I'm gonna copy all of the effects from the original one. That way it saves time too and we can see what we need to tweak from there on out. That's looking pretty good. It's a little pink for out there. It's supposed to be a lot more blue. So let's go to that tritone area and kind of make our midtones more blue and highlights also way more blue, maybe even white looking. And that definitely helps sell a lot as well. We do need to go and keyframe the blurriness though, because it is supposed to be a lot more blurry out there. Again, kind of just like imagine the piece of paper goes down and kind of try to match it with that. It doesn't have to be like perfectly realistic, but the closer you can get it, like the better it looks. So let's go 10 and then when we zoom in on Dirk here, let's make it nothing too crazy, maybe 15-ish. That's starting to look a little bit better. And since we have these lights coming down, you can use something like CC Spotlight, I think. Yeah, CC Spotlight's pretty good. You can make something pretty quick with this. I'm gonna make the edge softness 100, the intensity a decent amount. And then I'm gonna go for from the front spot, put it up here, and then the two right here to our clip and turn down the intensity. I'm actually gonna make it light add plus and just play around with the values, whatever looks good for you. And honestly, you might not even have to use this. And then I'm gonna try to match the color of the light to that a little bit better. We'll do that blue, grungy blue color. And you can see that just adds a little bit of element to it. And I'm gonna go to the beginning, keyframe the from and to, and then go to the end and also do the same thing. That way it just has a little bit movement and you can like have the focus area a little bit different. So it looks like lights are kind of like going by. So now it just has a little bit more of like that dynamic lighting. You don't have to do stuff like this. Everything here is just a little bit extra step. But as you can see, if we were to just go ahead and turn off all this and just have it motion tracked, how much crazy different it looks, right? Like that looks so much more in place than this. So each thing you do will take a little bit more time, but it definitely helps out a lot. So in the example, I have a piece of paper pop up behind Dirk. So if you want something popping up behind a wall or your subject or whatever, you're either gonna have to rotoscope out your subject or mask out depending on what you're doing. What I'm gonna do is duplicate our layer and actually remove the 3D camera tracker first so it doesn't give any issues and then rotoscope out and you can just select your subject or whatever you're rotoscoping out. So then I'm just gonna put our other layer in behind the rotoscope layer, but above the background layer, and then also make that 3D and motion blur. And now you can see it's behind our subject. Obviously it doesn't look good here, but it is now behind it. You can see how that's like that. So that's what I came up with. And let's go ahead and copy again, those tritones, curves, blur, and I don't need the spotlight for this one. So let's copy all of that over there. We can see we got something a lot better looking already. Go ahead and kind of angle the drop shadow in a different angle because the light's coming from here now. And let's also go ahead, and this is way darker over here. So maybe you can use something like brightness and contrast. You can basically use whatever to do the job, but I'm just trying to give you the concept Right now, we're just trying to make it a little bit darker. That way it matches the area back there a little bit more. Now, this is one of the ones that you can animate as well. So let's go ahead and just do that. We'll have it start like halfway through. Quickly do this. Once you do this a few times, you should be able to be pretty quick at it. The first time you do it, you might be a little slow and it, it takes a second to learn. But once you do it a few times, it's not too hard to actually figure out what to do. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I think this one right here is a little too bright. We can add brightness and contrast on here. There's always things you can change. I think this is a little too bright, so I'm just gonna bring down the brightness on this layer a bit. I think one thing that really, really sells this effect is actually having like a foreground item, like something like, for example, in this, I just had it like, can't even see what this picture is, but it just gives the element of like 3D and something passing there and like someone walking up or the camera zooming in. I think that helps out a lot for here. Obviously try to mimic whatever is going on in like your camera footage. So like just have it make sense. Like you gotta think about these things like a little bit more practical because that will help out a lot. So like just try to think think what would actually happen in real life if you were like walking up and there's a piece of paper here. Obviously you'd pass it and it would be super, super blurry because you wouldn't even be focusing on it. I'm gonna drag on that piece of paper, the last one. 
actually the 59th street. We're gonna make it 3D with the motion blur, make sure it's tracked, it is. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing we've done the whole entire time. This one you can be pretty quick with just because it's gonna be in the corner anyways. Try to give it a little bit of rotation though, just so it looks like a piece of paper, even though it's gonna be crazy, crazy blurred. And then I'm just going to keyframe the position forward and maybe some of this and that and that. That's pretty good because once we add Gaussian blur onto it and really crank it up, let's go ahead and keyframe the blurriness. Maybe start it at something like 46 and then before it passes the camera, let's have it go crazy, maybe like 110 or something. And you don't have to go all the way to the end if it's gonna cut off anyways. Keep that in mind. It's cutting off around here. Bring it like 125. That's looking really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy those layer styles just to have it have that look. I think that's looking pretty good actually. I think maybe make this a little bit brighter just because it's in the foreground and it looks like there's like a light that's pink here. So we could probably make the brightness a little bit more just like that and remove the Gaussian blur. Now that's looking pretty damn good. And also you can add any effects or whatever you want onto this. I'm just going to actually show you what it would look like if you did something crazy. I don't know if it matched like here for this scene, but I think it looks pretty cool. Adding the melting face preset for my liquid explosion pack on there. Uh, just combining stuff and combining styles. I'll go ahead and put it on here just so we can see what that looks like. I think it looks pretty cool for this. We'll leave it. And then as always, I got the extra sauce. Go ahead, pre-compose all this stuff. Name it old scene. Look okay. And let's go out of that so we have the full scene here. I'm gonna add some RSMB on. That's gonna help for sure sell the effect. I'm gonna bump up the number a little bit. If you don't have RSMB, you can use force motion blur. It's built in. I'm gonna add on add grain. And we're going to go to final output so we can see what that looks like. I think this is the one I like. And we're going to make the intensity and size a lot less. Now we're going to keep the intensity up, the size. I would just color grade the overall scene. This already has a really good color grade on. I'm going to do something really, really slight just so it helps out a little bit. Go to creative. I'm going to import my filmic LUT. You can see that that's really, really aggressive because it's already color graded. We're just going to turn that down a little bit. That's for my LUT pack if you guys were interested as well. It has like 12 super solid essential LUTs and we could leave it at like maybe something like 35. So now when we play that all together, you can see this is what we get. I think the little extra sauce at the end with the RSMB, the grain and the LUT really help out. You can kind of see what that looks like without and with it all together. It just blends everything together a lot better. I'll try to play, I'll play it right here. This is without everything. And then this is with RSMB grain and the LUT all on. I think it helps out a lot. So that is the full 3D tutorial. Before I end the video though, like I said, I'm doing the biggest sale I've ever done on my whole entire website. I've never done a buy one, get one free before. That's what we're doing until June 22nd at 11.59 p.m. CST. I know a lot of people have been liking the liquid explosion pack, the texture packs, all that stuff. So if you want to support the channel and also get a good deal right now, Go ahead and check that out. Also, if you're watching this video as it premieres or a few hours after, I'm still probably live on YouTube. So come say what's up, submit your video, get it critiqued, chill in chat. If you are watching this video a little bit later, I do stream every Friday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So be sure to ring the notification bell on YouTube. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.